question about feminism, black feminism, colorism, um, womanism, it comes up time and time again. And so I think we need to do the task of just trying to break this down right now. So I think we need to kind of talk about the reality that feminism itself is about a system which dismantles the idea that um, heteronormativity and male domination is a normal and sanctified order of the world and that includes challenging political, economic, social and cultural systems that are currently in place. So it's not just about women being equal to men as we understand it right now. For me, it's about us being totally radical with it and envisioning a whole new world where systems are determined not by domination and heteronormativity, but really by radical ideas and concepts of equity, of equality and justice, irrespective of gender and race. So that's where it all ties up, taking into acknowledgement the fact that for 400 or plus years since the beginning of the creation of race, and that could be for a whole other show, um, people have been subject to abuse, to denigration and inequality. And it's then matching that with saying, actually, as women, we've also been subjugated. And when you put the two together, as black women, there's a whole other layer of um, inequality and invisibility that we've been subject to. So I think that's an introduction to what um, black feminism is. Thank you, as always, for tuning into the banter bar and contributing to what was a frank, robust discussion. Uh, join us again next week for more heat. Oh, Louis, I don't think I could do breakfast this morning. Why not? I'm already halfway through the eggs. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. It's just I've got that big release at work today and it's got me feeling so nervous. I could barely sleep last night and now I don't have much of an appetite. Yeah, I remember you said. I thought you said most of the bugs are ironed out a couple of days ago. Yeah, but you know how it is once your release goes through. All sorts of things can pop up at the last minute. I'm not about to let no QA guy tell me that my codes are wrong. <laughs> I bet you paranoid sometimes, Valentine. Paranoid? Yes, paranoid. Look. It's inevitable that bugs will be found out during testing. That's what testing's there for. Do you know how many times I've had to redo my own code? And if I went on anything like you did, I'd be super depressed by now. Yes, bugs are found at all times, and that is what testing is for. But babe, you're a man in a male-dominated industry. The pressure's different for me. I have to be beyond perfect at all times. Oh, man. You'll be fine. Don't worry, OK? You're amazing. Yeah, that's how you never take me seriously. <laughs> anyway, mm. could you please pack my breakfast and I could take it to lunch later if I get hungry? Mm. Yes, sure, no problem. Just make sure you eat it, okay? Yes, I will, I promise. I'm sure things will get back to normal once all of this is done. Okay? I'm gonna go get ready now. Uh, babe, you haven't been food shopping this week, what we haven't been in tonight? Babe, I'm sorry I forgot to tell you. I've got cell group meeting later. But maybe we could get some Chinese? Okay? And then we could do a big shop tomorrow. Yeah. No problem, I can order Chinese.
So, Lara, what do you have planned for today? Oh, I'm not sure. There's this new cooking show on the Food Network channel, so I'm going to watch that and maybe go and see Kaima later on. It's her birthday soon, so we need to start making plans. Is that all? Is what all? Is that all you are doing today? Well, yeah, what else am I supposed to be doing? What else are you supposed to be doing? Lara, you haven't worked for months now, ever since you quit the job at the law firm. Aren't you supposed to be looking for a new job? Oh, Daddy, please, can we not have this conversation so early in the morning? Aren't you late for the shop? Unlike you, Lara, I've earned a day off today. Listen, come and work with me. Come and help with the accounts. Mr. Akindele is going to be leaving us soon to go back to Nigeria. Come and take over from him. Daddy, you know I know nothing about finance and accounting. Then you learn from him. Did I know anything about business before I opened up my first shop? Did your mother know anything about teaching before she trained to be a teacher? Did we know anything about England before we came here? Daddy... The answer is no, Lara. No. You have to get serious. Not everyone has had the opportunities you've had and continue to have. Not everyone has had the chances like you. After all, aren't most of your peers doctors or lawyers or married? And the ones who aren't married, aren't their parents desperately searching for someone to, to marry them? Look at me, Lara. I'm not like them. I want my daughter to be happy for herself, to make her own choices and be proud of them. I'm your dad. You have no job and I'm offering you one. Not forever, but at least as a step into a career. A career in what? In accounting? What is wrong with that? Oh my gosh, Daddy, you know I have absolutely no interest in finance and all that accounting stuff. Goodness, are you trying to kill me slowly? That's enough, Lara. What your father is trying to say is that you're not young anymore. You need to start looking at building a career, a future, a life. This whole thing of going around the world, temping and quitting jobs, spending money not saving, it can't continue for much longer. Even if I wanted to get a job, there'll be no point in looking now. I leave for the Gambia in like two weeks. Listen, I'm grateful for, for all you guys have done and what you've done to create many opportunities for me and Nide. But I really, really don't want to be an accountant. Then, Lara, what is it that you do want? I don't know. I'm still searching, I guess. I still can't believe the Lancet accepted my paper. Yeah, it's quite an achievement. Look at you, on your way to medical superstardom. Well, I wouldn't quite say superstardom, but, you know, pretty close. <laughs> hey, I was joking. I know. I know. Seriously, well done. I mean, I couldn't understand half the things in that paper, but your article was interesting. My article on hypertension within the Somali community was interesting. Is that it? OK, Joseph, what's up? What do you mean? I mean, I'm really excited and happy tonight, but I'm not so self-absorbed that I can't see something's wrong with you. You've been preoccupied with something since you picked me up this evening. What is on your mind? Nothing. I'm fine. No, I'm not fine. Look, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. You're happy. I'm happy. I'm proud of you, Hodan. OK? And I'm grateful that you chose me to celebrate with you tonight. <laughs> grateful? What is that supposed to mean? Just what I said. You know, you could be with your colleagues, another guy, your friends. Okay, first of all, I mean, why? Why would I voluntarily spend my free time with the private school duo Rachel and Bucci? I mean, come on. Watching them childishly buy for my consultant's affection for 12 hours a day is quite enough for me, thank you. Well, I Another don't... guy? My friend, I mean, what are you? Aren't you both? I'm both. Neither one or the other. Who knows, Hodan? OK. So this is what's been annoying you all evening. I'm not annoyed. But you are. Hodan, look, let's... Let's not get into this. Into what? Joe, we are friends. Hodan, 
We're not friends. All right? Friends don't sleep together. We both said we didn't want anything too serious. Yeah, but that was two years ago. People change, they grow up. Look, I'm sorry, okay? I don't want to spoil our evening. It's just that when you text me the good news, I was so happy for you. I remembered all the work you put in, all the tears, the sleepless nights, the rejections and dismissals, I remembered. I was there for you. Yes, and I am grateful. Yes. And my first instinct was to think of something nice I could do for you. Congratulate you. To celebrate you. So I went online. Started looking at holidays, you know, like a weekend Europe break to somewhere like Italy. They're racist. Spain. <laughs> even worse. Just anywhere. That's not even the point. Look, the point is... Seriously, the... I wanted to do something nice and grand for you, but I couldn't because I don't even know what you are to me. It's frustrating, Hodan. Okay, you say that we're friends, but friends don't have sex, and friends don't go on dates, and well, they don't take each other on holiday. As are not kind of friends you have, but Kaima and I go on holidays and dates all the time. Don't be facetious, I'm not Kaima. Okay, so maybe you have a point. Sex is more complicated, but what do you want us to do? Do you want us to stop? That's not what I'm saying, Odin. I just... I would just like to know that this will become clearer one day. One day being sooner rather than later. You want to settle down? I'm not trying to marry you, Odin. I... I really care about you. And I enjoy every moment I have with you, and I want more. I just... I don't know how much longer I can be in this grey area where I'm not your boyfriend, but I'm not your friend. Why won't you just let us be official? So, Joseph, we've spoken about it before. I'm not ready for any commitments and... I think you're wonderful. Like, I really do. But... I'm just not ready for any man to come and define me just so that he can feel comfortable at the expense of my sense of freedom. Like, just not now. Not with everything that's going on in my life and my career. I'm just not ready. <laughs> expense of your freedom. You know I didn't mean it like that. Nah. I know exactly how you meant it. It's fine. Have it your way like you always do. I won't be bringing this up again, OK? Thank you for everything tonight, Joseph. I had a really lovely time. Cool. OK, so I'll speak to you tomorrow. Let me know you got home, OK? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen. Hold on. You don't need to explain anything. We'll speak tomorrow, yeah? Congratulations again on your publication. It is a major achievement. Thank you. OK, well, um, I guess I'll be going then. Say hello to your mum for me. Sure, will do. So I really think it's an important factor and discussion that we need to consider, which is 
first is the absence and then in addition to absence what happens when we do get on the tv screens because it's not looking too good next on life of hers i find it so annoying how our generation is given everything myriad options but then we're expected to have life all figured out by the age of 14 and if we don't then we're obviously lost it's a joke she wants to take over yeah okay what do you discuss in these meetings well we discuss prayer our relationship with god the bible do you talk about our relationship <laughs> what no of course not don't be silly did she know that we live together? No, why would I tell her that? And that we have sex as well. Oh, Louise. 